morning good afternoon good evening welcome to the african wahala I need to put on my earphones welcome to the african wahala on diaspora radio international man it's another day to talk about some nigerian politics how it affects us as a people and what we must do to make sure that we reverse this suffering that we find ourselves in as a people starting off with the apc convention that took place on saturday in abuja nigeria it was a show of shame that's what it was extremely embarrassing i really hope my audio is clear before we keep going please if i am having any audio issues let me know in the comment section and then i'll keep going so the apc that's the all people's congress democratic party that took place in abuja a couple of days ago in abuja it was a show of shame it was nothing but an embarrassment for apc and their affiliates anybody connected with that party starting off with the new chairman of the party he goes by the name Bashir Abdullahi, sorry, um, Abdullahi Adamu. He was a former senator, or he's still a senator from Nasarawa State. He represents Nasarawa West, and he was a former governor of Nasarawa State. He turned out to be the new chairman of the political party, APC. Um, we're also going to talk about some other appointees by the same APC political party, in the last six years since they took over power in nigeria and the effects of those people okay and we also have to analyze the content of their character these individuals that apc has risen from nowhere to the top another example is the minister of defense he goes by the name bashir magashi that's the minister of defense in nigeria another guy is the minister of communications he goes by the name isaac pantami so these three guys are going to be the spotlight for tonight's conversation first guy is abdullahi adamu a senator from west central i mean western region of nasarawa state the second guy is the current minister of defense bashir magashi and the third guy is the current minister of communications isaac bantami now <laughs> you know nigeria is such a a strange place where there is no equity there is no justice but what even makes it worse is that the people that perpetuate injustice if they belong to the political class to the elites they are given more powers they are usually rewarded with more powers more access to money starting off with this current guy that is the chairman of the apc now apc shouldn't be our business okay like what intricately goes on within the apc should not really concern us as a people as far as the political party is doing what it's supposed to do to improve the country and the lives of the people then the people wouldn't really dig deep into what is going on within the party but if you look at the convention that took place on saturday and they they came up with a consensus chairman according to them the former governor of nasarawa state he is also a current serving senator if you dig into this guy's history he was arrested by the efcc for money laundry charges way back in 2013 so the cases happened in 2010 when allegedly he colluded with some construction companies in nasarawa state and they ended up siphoning 15 billion naira so he was charged to court in 2013 they filed many counter cases just to throw it out to make sure he doesn't go to jail they claimed the efcc was not within its jurisdiction because it is a federal agency and um, it's not supposed to have powers to investigate probe and, pr and probably prosecute a state actor okay I'm talking about the state of Nasarawa state now so they tried to throw that away but eventually it was swept under the carpet fast forward on Saturday the new APC convention 
they made that same guy the chairman of the party but that's not a surprise because it has always been this way with apc not just apc this is not even a campaign against apc don't get it wrong it's a campaign against the status quo okay this includes pdp whenever pdp decides to have their own convention there will be so many controversies as well and this is a proof to us the people that pdp and apc are the same thing i seen a tweet one time where the guy said the p in apc stands for pdp and that makes a lot of sense because they are both criminal organizations in my opinion from what i have observed and i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys agree so the new chairman of the apc is an actual criminal that is currently fighting a case, a case against the, with the efcc for laundering money but the case was swept under the carpet that was the individual that buhari chose to make the chairman of the party now the second guy we're going to talk about also an apc appointee but this guy ended up being a minister and that is um, the minister of defense bashir magashi bashir magashi became the minister of defense once buhari took over nigeria right with the apc in 2015 bashir magashi if you go dig into this guy's history okay the minister of defense the person responsible okay one of the main key players responsible for protecting nigeria's in integrity and nigerians this guy okay back in the days when sunny abacha was the military dictator the president of nigeria he stole a lot of money we all know that it was documented heavily okay people are estimating that sunny abacha stole between 3 billion us dollars to 5 billion us dollars while he was the military head of state now it's impossible for such an individual to loot so much money without colluding with other individuals so one of the individuals that he colluded with was bashir magashi the current minister of defense in nigeria he also colluded with some guy named aziz another guy named um, um oladi Bodia. we all know oladi Bodia, the guy that was um dia was um, um he was about to be prosecuted for planning a coup against sunny abacha and then there was a viral video that went around where he was kneeling down begging for his life from abacha just like a don't even let me say it, like a coward anyways bashir magashi ends up being the minister of defense in nigeria today a guy that he was a thief okay during the sunny abacha's era he helped steal a lot of money one of the documented histories with bashir magashi was when um obasanjo took over power in 1999 so obasanjo was in the process of trying to recover as much as possible loot from Sunny Abacha and other um, leaders in Nigeria. So if you guys remember, Sunny Abacha's loot was alleged to have been stored, like a huge portion of it to have been stored in Switzerland, a European country. So Obasanjo hired a Switzerland, a Swiss, what was their nationality called now? A Swiss investigative journalist to find out how much money Sunny Abacha stashed in Switzerland, and that money should be recovered back to Nigeria. That was Obasanjo's plans. So while the investigative journalist was doing his biddings, his research, he found out that a guy named Bashir Magashi was one of the people that worked with Sunny Abacha to steal money. The particular amount of money that was connected to Bashir Magashi was um, $550,000. Okay, so Obasanjo made a deal with Bashir Magashi that listen, I will let you return a huge portion of that loot. If you return that loot, I will make sure that you're not investigated you're not going to be disgraced okay we understand you stole money but if you can return a huge portion of the loot no problem keep the remaining and you're going to be a free man and that was exactly what happened don't get it twisted it wasn't only five hundred thousand dollars that magashi stole that was what was discovered in switzerland that he stole so magashi ended up returning four hundred thousand dollars back to the coffers of nigeria 
So Obasanjo, the then president, decided not to prosecute him. So he became a free man. He went back to his village. He was chilling with his grandchildren, just doing his thing. And then fast forward, Buhari came into power in 2015, went to dig out this criminal that never went to jail for his crimes, made him the Minister of Defense. And then you might be wondering, why is the defense of the country in shit? How come this country that has been fighting against Boko Haram has not been successful in any way, shape or form? And what even makes it worse is that the Boko Haram insurgency has multiplied, has diversified. Now we have many, many terrorist groups running around the country from Fulani bandits, terrorists, from Fulani killer herdsmen, and I'm not saying all Fulanis are terrorists, don't even get it twisted, because there are many normal good Fulani people, the same way we have terrorists in many other ethnicities in the country. This is not an attack on Fulani people. But the fact is, we've heard it time after time, that the so-called bandits are of Fulani extraction and they are terrorists. So we also have the Boko Haram, we have the Iswap, we have all types of terrorist groups running around the country. Why? Because the Minister of Defense is a criminal. And that's a fact. Go do your research. Find out who Bashir Magashi actually is. He was dug out from the dirt by Buhari to come and continue the agenda that Buhari has. Now, I spoke about um, the current APC chairman that was elected on Saturday. That guy has a deep criminal past. Documented! But that was the same individual that the same Buhari chose to make the leader of his political party. Now let's go to the third individual. We are talking about the current Minister of Communications, Isak Bantami. We all heard about Isak Bantami. He went viral in 2021. What had happened was that um, so Isak Bantami was very vocal, was threatening Nigerians, was going around all the TV stations from channels, Arise TV, telling people that, man, if you don't register your NIN or if you, if you only want to rely on your BVN, you're going to end up in jail. You might be liable to go to prison for 14 years. Isak Bantami came out and said that at some point. That was how confident he was. And then people were like, bro, Baba, wait till this guy they talk now. Wait. Maybe we just collect BVN. Which one be NIN? How is this NIN going to improve our lives or improve the security in the country? To be honest, there might be some advantages in the NIN, but the fact that criminal people, people with questionable characters are implementing these things, it makes us hypersensitive and question what is going on. And that's exactly what it is. So when that was happening with the NIN braggadociousness of Isaac Bantami, people dug out audio clips video clips of isaac pantami yeah showing his solidarity with boko haram the current minister of communications this guy was crying he was so passionate he was preaching to some people okay in his religion and he was so passionate in the preaching he was crying and complaining that why are the nigerian military killing this boko haram like pigs oh they don't deserve this that's the boko haram that the nigerian military will burn in hell that oh oh death he was he started cursing out other countries like the us like the uk the guy was just going crazy then another audio clip came out this guy was saying he was basically pledging his allegiance to Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab and the Taliban in Afghanistan and Boko Haram. And then Nigerians got wind of this. They spread the videos and the audios all over social media. It went viral. People are asking for this guy's head. Have this guy, the current Minister of Communications, have him investigated and sacked. Sack this man. We do not want a terrorist sympathizer to be in control of our personal data because he's the minister of communications he's trying to implement the national identity number scheme but he's a terrorist sympathizer in a country that has been fighting against terrorism non-stop since 2009 without any success if anything the terrorism has only grown bigger the individuals 
that are the top generals, the top military guys fighting against the terrorism. The only thing that has happened to them between 2009 and 2022 is that they have become billionaires. So if you do the math, you can easily tell that this country that borrows money after money to fight against terrorism and has not been successful, but at the same time, the top generals are billionaires. Obviously, a lot of that money goes into the pockets of the top military guys. So what are we talking about? So that is how we have a country where criminals are rewarded with higher roles, higher positions of authority and power to make money. Now let's go deeply and let's dig into just briefly into the um, APC, the APC chairman and why it is important for us to talk about it. If APC is one of the most influential political parties in Nigeria, because Nigeria is a democracy, okay, quote unquote, it is not a democracy, we all know that, it's a fake democratic system, it's a democratic system on paper. The same way it is a federal constituency on paper, but in real life, it is a unitary system of government and it is not a democracy. What we have is, we don't even have an autocracy, we don't have a dictatorship, we just have nothing. It's just a, it's just, it's nothing. The Nigerian system does not exist. It is unique to Nigeria. It doesn't exist anywhere else in the world okay so if we have a democratic system and one of the most powerful political parties is APC and APC's national chairman is a criminal then what are we talking about we are unable to send him to jail because once you become an elite in the political space okay and you commit crimes and you are friends with the administration no problem you're not going to jail because automatically you are bigger than the judiciary institution so nobody can send you to jail that's why all these guys that i've been mentioning they don't go to prison prison is not meant for rich elites in nigeria prison is meant for the poor people that are struggling to survive unfortunately and if you don't have money to fight for yourself if you don't have a voice you are a nobody so it's important for us to identify the intricacies in these political parties and trust me this is not only about apc pdp is not far off apart from the way that apc disgraced themselves okay in that convention that they had in abuja where we found crazy videos we found people that were um that that were getting beaten by police officers we found thugs <laughs> we found thugs breaking two by four planks on the heads of the delegates that was hilarious man we were we were cheering them down yeah break all their heads because these people have no brains they are all there to support their stomach infrastructure they want the status quo to remain the way it is where 99 percent of the population is living in abject poverty okay or at least has a huge amount of struggle while one percent has all the resources under their control and then they started crying they started crying that oh why are these people beating us let me show you guys a quick video of this one funny guy that, that went there from he called himself apc apc um foreign diaspora This funny guy is talking about hey, oh I came from Canada as a foreign delegate to witness the APC convention and they started beating us after lining up for hours they started stealing our phones bro where you think so you day you don't know what I'm saying in Nigeria you day yeah 
so a lot of these people are just crazy you find them living abroad they have a decent life they don't have to suffer from from lack of petrol lack of electricity you know lack of human rights they don't have those problems but they support the status quo in nigeria from abroad because they are waiting for their opportunity a guy like this there are many of them right they always go back for those conventions so that people can identify them and can be familiar with their faces so that eventually in the future they might be able to get into one position maybe as a commissioner or you know as maybe a senator or a minister or whatever in the future that that's their dream because in Nigeria, the most lucrative career path is politics, which is crazy. Politics is supposed to be a place where you improve the situation in your country and the standard of living of your people. Okay. Um, I was going to, let me play an audio for you. This is from the minister, the um, senator, the um, senator of West Nasarawa, the new APC chairman. Okay. I'm not going to play it. I'll just say what he said. So there was an interview that he had that also came out recently where he was talking about the herdsman issue, um, what the federal government is supposed to do about the Fulani herdsmen that are running around killing people. They are basically not all of them, but they have a group of them that are terrorists. Okay, the Fulani herdsmen. Some are decent human beings, but many of them are terrorists as well. So this guy, the new APC chairman, okay, the one that is a thief that was um, investigated, arrested by EFCC under investigation. The investigation ended up being swept under the carpet because he's a political elite and he's friends with the administration. So this same individual, he came out in an interview and he was explaining that the herdsmen deserve to be protected because according to him and his analogy, he said the same thing that Abubakar Malami said that the herdsmen need to be protected because spare parts dealers get some sort of protection. He also said if a business goes under due to a recession or an economic turmoil, that federal government comes out with money from the central bank to bail out some of those establishments. And he was comparing that to the herdsmen issue. It just shows you that these guys are all playing a game, you know. It's not a coincidence that Abu Bakar Malami said the same exact thing in that interview last year with Channels TV. And that is the same thing that this APC chairman comes out to say. Because they, they, these are criminals, bro. These are people that, they are not patriotic citizens. They don't care about the country. They don't even care about themselves. Because if they cared about themselves, which they think they do, they will try to improve their environment for their own benefit. For example, these guys will fix the hospitals. That is like the most basic thing that you're supposed to do. Even if you're a corrupt thief, okay? I mean, there, were, there are many corrupt criminals in many other countries that are politicians, many. But the ones in Nigeria, they are just so dumb that they don't even care about themselves. Because if you really do care about yourself, the least you can do is secure your own life. Build a country where you have good hospitals so that if you fall sick or if your children fall sick, they have a place to go. They are not always in a hurry to jump on a private jet to travel abroad for medical treatment because they have good hospitals two kilometers away from their houses. But they don't think that way. They are so they are so retarded, it's unbelievable, you know. They just want to pocket all the money, buy private houses, mansions in Dubai, in the US and in London. Protect. And keep the rest of us in the poverty situation. That's it. So with all of that being said, um I'm going to round up this live stream now. It's important that we understand that APC has exposed itself, okay? But as much as it has exposed itself, people are still going to support APC, okay? The same things that APC is doing right now, that is the same exact thing that PDP will do. PDP is also a criminal organization like APC, but in Nigeria, we call them political parties, okay? The reason why they are criminal organizations is because 
their members, the core executives, even the lower ranked members, most of them have criminal records. Okay, these are people that have stolen money. They've stolen money and it has been documented. The money that they stole is money that should have improved the standard of living of the people. Money that should have been used to improve the roads, the roads with potholes all over the place, the hospitals, build good schools. Because now that we don't have good roads, good hospitals, good schools, we have a society that is dangerous. Someone is driving on the wrong road. You get into an accident because you run into a pothole that should have been fixed. Your car rolls over, you somersault. Now you're in pain. But nobody even wants to stop to pick you up to take you to the hospital because people are afraid that if I take this guy to the hospital, I might be in some police wahala. Maybe I should just let it go and hope someone else takes him to the hospital. Now, the hospitals are not even equipped. So where you got that hospital, if you are lucky enough that a good Samaritan picks you up and takes you to the hospital, there is a good chance that the hospital will not be equipped and you will have to be transferred to another hospital far away. Forget about emergency medical services. That does not even exist. There is no way you're calling any emergency number. Oh, I just had an accident. I'm in the middle of um, Bini or an expressway. There is, no, there is no 911 to call. These are the things that should have been implemented in a country, in a normal country, okay? Even South Africa, they have all these things that I just mentioned. South Africa has emergency medical services. They have good hospitals. They have good roads. They have good basic amenities, okay? So there is no point trying to compare yourself with any other country or calling yourself the giant of Africa. There are many other countries in Africa that have these things. You go to Namibia, you go to Botswana, you even go to some West African countries. They have some of these things. So we deserve it. But the people that have prevented us from having it, they are rewarded with higher political roles where they can have more power and make more money and continue the mess. I just mentioned three individuals in this live stream. You can watch it from the beginning if you like this type of conversation. Three individuals in this current APC administration. And those are not the only three. I didn't even talk about Ganduje, the governor of, of Kano State, that is also con con trying to become the president or the vice president of the country. Someone that is supposed to be in jail, just like Tinubu. Tinubu, many investigations on top of him. He's supposed to be in jail, but he's trying to be the president. Just like Atiku, Atiku committed so many crimes, ran away to Dubai, came back and said, I want to rescue you people, I want to be your president. All these guys are supposed to be in prison. But unfortunately, we have a system that rewards criminals, elite criminals. Petty thieves, petty criminals go to jail or they get killed. But elite criminals, they get rewarded with top roles. Just like the new APC chairman, a former governor of Nasarawa State and current senator, a thief. That, is current, that has been under the investigation of EFCC since 2010. And I forgot to mention his son. His son was also under the investigation of the EFCC for committing fraud in 2017 of 92 million naira with some of his colleagues and some other companies, construction companies in Nasarawa State. Bro, we have nothing but thieves that have power. So when people that are criminals they have the power to send you to jail. Man, man, the revolution can come any, any sooner. Then I also talked about Isaac Bantami, an absolute terrorist, that his terrorism, his love for terrorists came to the surface last year. People were calling for him to be sacked and investigated. And a serious country that has been fighting terrorism for over 10 years should have done that. But obviously, it's part of their agenda to have a guy like Isaac Bantami as the Minister of Communications. And I also spoke about the Minister of Defense, Bashir Mag Magashi, a thief, okay, that was pardoned by Obasanjo through unscrupulous means. The fact that Obasanjo pardoned Magashi does not mean that he is not a thief. In a normal country, Magashi, before you get pardoned, you would have been in jail, in prison. 
maybe while in prison then you get pardoned but in this case he was never thrown in prison he was allowed to go scot-free then rewarded many years later to become the minister of defense then you wonder why we don't have defense we don't have nothing but thank you guys for tuning in make sure you continue rejecting apc a pdp all these criminal organizations that we've been used to okay because these guys all they care about all they want is to maintain the status quo that gives them power money and resources they don't care about the consequences unfortunately the consequences is that we the 99 percent of the population will be poverty stricken we will be living in a country ravaged by terrorists and we're going to have a difficult life without basic amenities so we have to continue rejecting that i know the revolution is slowly building up because i have never witnessed a time in my entire life that more people are speaking up are agitated and are ready for a change but we have to continue enlightening more people we just have to continue there are still millions of people out there that will easily be manipulated by pdp and apc and their criminal members to maintain the status quo while they are poor but we have to continue enlightening them unfortunately most of those people are not even on facebook Someone is trying to join the live stream. If I can't bring him in, then I will round it up in a second. Just one second. If they accept, they can join the camera on camera or with audio only. You set the audience to public. Anyone can see your live. Let's see if this works. So someone is trying to join in. Yeah, I can let you join in quickly. You can speak for a few minutes, then I'll round it up. Okay, not happening. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Like the video, share the video, drop a comment. Peace.